I finally got a new key light, a main light that I use to light me for these videos and interviews or anything else I do, where I need a big, soft source of light. So the Lightstorm COB 120D, that's a lot of letters. The COB is for chip on board. It's a bunch of little LEDs put onto a single chip instead of a bunch of LEDs on a big panel, which can create weird shadows. This is almost like one single bulb. And the D is for daylight. I got the daylight version because in my space here where I record, I have lots of daylight that comes streaming in. This I just bought to replace my main key light, which was falling apart. So I finally did it. It is definitely investment. This is almost $600 with the kit. So it took me quite a while to make that purchase. And I looked at video after video after video review of this light. And everything I've seen has been really good. And so far, I'm experiencing that as well. I'm enjoying the Aperture. In fact, the Aperture brand, I really, without owning any Aperture products, I really like them. They're in the community, tons of tutorials, great videos, great people, it seems like, from their videos. But they really seem like they're doing stuff for you and I, people who are creating video on a budget level, whereas it might be our hobby or our side gig. It's not the thing that's paying the bills necessarily, not YouTube videos. So you can get into really quality gear without having to break the bank, and it, they don't sacrifice on the quality of the product. I guess that's what I mean by quality gear. They're making a lot of things that you'll see in the pro market friendly for, what well, you guess you could say consumers or prosumers. So the one thing I was surprised about, because every review talks about this, it's one of the features that Aperture lists on their website is how quiet the light is. Having all those chips on one board has some advantages, like I mentioned. However, it also creates a decent amount of heat, enough heat that the light needs a fan. And when I hear fans, I really am not happy about that because we're doing audio. I'm doing video and you need the audio and I don't want that fan getting into the audio and creating a hiss or a background noise. Now I can hear it. The light is about, I don't know, five feet away, maybe four and a half. I can hear it. And so I was disappointed in that because they say it's dead silent. However, if we're quiet, as long as that's not leaking in the audio, I'm not concerned. This is probably about as close as I would have it for an interview setup. I'm running it at about, well, it's on 64% right now. And it's pretty dark in here without this light. In fact, you get this remote, which is nice. And I can go ahead and turn it off so you can see what it looks like without the light on. So there you go, decently dark in this room, a little daylight coming from the front here. But we go ahead and click that light on and it's doing a really nice job. We can also dim from the remote and it does that pretty fast, comes up. And go back to, what was I, 64? Sure, 64%. What's nice about the dimming feature is I can turn on the false color on my monitor I can set the aperture that I want on my camera, which on the Sony a6500 right now, I'm running it at f4. The ISO is 800. It has to be because I'm doing S-Log2, so that's the minimum you can go. So 64% on the light, f4, ISO 800, I'm getting a nice exposed image. And I can sit here with the false color and dial in the dimness or the brightness that I want based on what I'm seeing on the false color. So it's nice that you can separate yourself from the light and have a remote as well. I mentioned it was daylight balanced light. It's 6,000 K. That's not quite daylight, which would be typically if you have a preset on your camera, that's 5,600. So we'll see. I have a little bit of daylight, as I mentioned, coming in through a window in front of me, although it's covered outside. So it's not much daylight. We'll see if it causes any issue when it mixes with the other daylight. The light you see back here, is a little LED, that's daylight balance and it's lighting the background and it seems to match. So I'm not really concerned with that. The CRI is the color rendering index, I believe. Something close to 100 is what you want because it's going to take your colors that you see and produce them accurately or more accurately than something with a low CRI number. This has 96, so it's really good. I've seen a lot of tests. You wanna check out my YouTube friend, Curtis Judd, 
He's the one you wanna check out for lighting. I watched a lot of his videos on these lights. He's done extensive testing and everyone agrees that the color rendition of this light, it's not skewing it green or some other color or it's not even skewing or changing colors in your image. So black is gonna be black and in this case you see some orange back there and that's gonna actually be orange when you shine this light on it. So that's good, you don't want the light changing the colors in your scene. And my other previous light, as I mentioned, it was six CFL bulbs, very delicate, as you can see, and cumbersome to have all these different bulbs. Lots of light, but this is definitely an upgrade, much more efficient, and it broke. Essentially, the softbox broke, and that's why, for the most reason, I couldn't use it anymore. I also added the Lightstorm Mini to this setup, I got the smaller of the soft boxes. The other soft box, while I like it because it gives you a bigger diffusion, more diffusion, bigger source, uh, the Lightstorm Mini fits much better into my space. So that's the decision I made to get that. It also comes with this grid, which this is something that is premium. And this grid, you put the grid on the light here and it makes it highly directional. And this, and this very medieval looking light, these spikes coming out of it, looks strange, but it makes it very easy to do things like put the grid uh, on and off very fast, as well as the diffusion itself. So that's pretty cool. One of the other big features for me on this light is that it has a Bowens mount, something I wasn't really familiar with before, but it's got a mount that is compatible with all kinds of attachments. So it comes with this reflector attachment here. And that's another thing I really love about this light. I mentioned Curtis, he did a test that convinced me where he had one LED panel and he shined it on the background and then he shined the C120D on there and it was such a much more even light, really broad, soft and even, and even the edges of the light have a nice transition from light to dark. So that was pretty impressive, I liked that, that showed me the quality of the build and the light itself. And speaking of that build, it's aluminum all around. So it's going to be able to be packed up and taken on the go with you. I'm not worried about this light being delicate. The other lights that I had, as I mentioned, they were much more delicate. So you kind of want to set them up and not have to tear them down over and over again. This light you could tear down, pack it away, travel with it, even if it's in your space and doesn't move much. When you do move it around, I've already hit it on the ceiling twice and uh, I'm not concerned with it damaging the light. So very well built. And if you do want to take it on the go with you, it actually comes with a case that you'd probably want to use. Really nice, rigid case, padded inside. You can pack it away very simply and take it. So that's a nice thing. Aperture seems to give you, another thing I really like about them, they give you what you need. You've got the power adapter for the wall as well as you've got this separated power unit. Now it's nice that it's separated because the light can go up really high and you can still control the light, you know, without the remote on the unit itself. And you can attach a V mount or a gold mount battery, also something I wasn't very familiar with, uh, but you can attach that to the back and it probably helps with the heat, it's not having all of that, that battery right up with the light. Also, it's not as heavy near the top when you have the battery separated towards the bottom. And since it's sort of decoupled with the cable from the top, it doesn't sort of yank on the light when the light is up above the system. And it hangs really nicely on the light stand. So I like it, it's a little big, but again, being able to throw a battery on the back, which is what I have right now. I already had a V-mount battery to power a Zoom F8 that I was using. Another recommendation from Curtis. Curtis, you do awesome stuff, thanks man. And I wasn't expecting it to be able to power this. That is one thing I saw that a lot of batteries and you can't just get any v-mount battery the one i have this juice box one i'll link it up in the description it's not technically rated for this light but i found if i run it at about 65 70 percent that it actually will power it for how long i'm not sure probably about an hour maybe a little bit more but it makes it super freeing to be able to put a battery on it and you don't have to find a socket in the wall super fast production that way but some batteries that can't handle the wattage or the amps will just shut down. They have an internal mechanism that'll shut them down automatically. And that will happen if I run this at 100%. But overall, I really am enjoying the light. It's doing the job of replacing my old key light 
and that is exactly what I needed. The kit doesn't come with a light stand, so I am using the light stand that I had for my other one. At least that part got the transfer over. And I'll still use that one because I can put the bulbs in and use it to light up a big space. I can reflect it off the ceiling, off a wall or something, and it can light up an entire area with a ton of light. Although I did find that one skewed my color because the quality wasn't as good, had sort of the greenish tint to it. And that's kind of what you can get out of lower quality lights, but I can still use it. But mostly I run pretty much on this one key light. I got some good contrast going on this side of my face. I could use a fill light over here. That's typically what that FNV R300 does for me. Today it's just lighting up my background. I like the look I get from the sort of higher contrast instead of making everything just flat white. So a one single key light works for me. I mentioned the Bowens mount and it's really cool because it's universal, but one of the things I don't like is how loose the connection is. Don't know if that's normal for a Bowens mount, but that part doesn't seem as on quality as the rest of the light. That said, I'm not worried about it coming unattached because it does lock in to the mount. All right, that's it. Ask your questions in the comments and I will see you next time.